Dude, I don't know what it is about Todd's, but I've only had two people that have had a part one and a part two, and they're both named Todd. <laughs> and I think they stopped naming people Todd 50 years ago. So really? I, that's what I heard. So I, I, I don't know, but uh, hey, it's what it is. Welcome back to Can't Shovel Hurricanes. And this is something that we have to start off on is like your 95 year old grandmother went skydiving. Not my grandmother, my mother. Your mother. My mother. So. Oh my God. Yeah. So for my 50th, uh, I had always wanted to go. So, um, <laughs> they, they got it for me. My two daughters came down that day. We you voluntarily want to do this. Yeah. Voluntarily. Yeah. Right. Always. Uh, people always say, uh, why would you jump out of a perfectly good airplane? Mm-hmm. But, you know, um, you know, I hate being in them. I'm scared. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm all about, yes. I, I, I say yes to everything. That's kind of my MO. Um, unless it's, you know, hurting someone or doing something, you know, terrible, uh, I'm game. Let's go do it. So, um, and even if I'm scared to do it, uh, that's like, let's punch through the wall and, and get over with. So it was, you know, a little scary, um, getting in the plane. I was, um, down in Miami and, uh, they put me right next to the edge. So halfway up, they put the, the door up <sighs> my, and my, I'm just like dangling, looking over You're 10,000 feet up. Can you chicken out? Um, you can, but you're tied to a guy. So you're, you're doing a tandem. So you're like, you're sitting in his lap and, and the good part was he's gone 7,000 times. So I'm feeling a little bit more comfort level. Um, I get up there and it's like my time and I'm just like, Hey, I'm, I'm putting all my faith in this guy and, and pushed off and let's go. Um, so for about 30 seconds, you're free falling. There is no, um, but there's no, uh, like on your roller coaster, there's no queasiness because you're just flying, you know, you're just, you know, free falling. Uh, and in about 30 seconds, they pull the chute and everything goes silent. So you don't hear anything. It's, it's like very, very quiet up there. And it's just a peaceful, you know, floating down. And about halfway down, he says, you know, do you get queasy? And I said, no, I don't. Let's go. And so he pulls the string and pretty soon that's where the queasiness cart comes. Cause now you're like on a roller coaster and you're going back and forth. So, yeah. So, and then you come down to the landing and it's like, you put your legs out, like you're, you know, sliding into a, um, you know, a base or whatever and you land and you're just like, you know, thank God I made it, you know, but the experience was amazing. So when we went, my two daughters were with me and they immediately wanted to go get on and do it themselves. And I said, no, you gotta, you gotta, I'll get it for your birthday. And, uh, they both went, we went back, uh, after they went, they, they loved it. They enjoyed it. We were sitting around Christmas and my mother heard the stories and she said, I want to go. And we're all kind of laughing. She was about 89 at the time. And, uh, she said, she calls me up like a month later. She says, listen, Todd, I'm really serious. I, I want to go. I'm like, my brothers and sisters would kill me if something ever happened to her, but she was persistent. I got it for her birthday. The following year, um, she decided to go. And sure enough, she went up, jumps out of the plane. So I take the video and I send it to all the TV stations in Connecticut. So she goes, the next like couple hours later, she's like, Todd, what did you do? She said, I've got three stations, ABC, NBC, and CBS interviews this afternoon. What the heck did you do? So, you know, she knows what was going on, but they interviewed her and she was like, you know, exclusive grandma jumps out of a plane. She's in the local newspaper. It was just a, it was just a great thing. And this is from someone that was not a big risk taker, you know, great mom, you know, did all the motherly things in, in, you know, full fashion, just great being mother. But, um, this was just so out of her character. And she just kind of said, you know, when am I ever going to have time to do this again? I love hearing that, man. It yeah. also makes me realize how much of a chicken I really am. <laughs> I was telling her, I go, I've got six, four guys on my team, on my hockey team that won't go out no. and, and they'll do it. And she does it. So that, wow, dude, I don't know. Your mom's my, my hero because I am so terrified with that stuff. I don't even like pl- flying. Yeah. I have to get somewhat medicated. <laughs> if I'm not with my kids, then, you know, I'm sleeping through whatever I have to. Sure. Not, I'm not a big fan. Sure. You and I touched on so much mm-hmm. and we had to have a part two because I don't even know if we scratched the surface of some of the things that you have done and, and are doing. Mm-hmm. Um, you had mentioned something um, about um, business for hockey players or some okay. sort of group. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm going to bring it back to my mother, um, she's always been one. She had a, a large family. She had uh, eight brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. Um, I had like uh, 30, 40 cousins growing up. I always tell people it's kind of like that. Um, 
Four Weddings and a Funeral, that movie, <laughs> because unfortunately, every summer, there'd be a cousin getting married, and unfortunately, someone would pass away. So at a very early age, I kind of grew up very quickly knowing what life and death was and, you know, learning from my, I had four grandparents live with my parents at the end of their lives. So I got a lot of insight of what the end game was. And I think that's what kind of, you know, um, me growing up, seeing like what was important to them towards the end of their life. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? What, what did you learn from that early on? Sure. So I think they, most of it was all about family. It wasn't about the money. It wasn't about, um, you know, so much the rat race, the, the ego, the recognition. It was, you know, at the end of the day, um, the memories that they had with the friends and family that they had, um, was really the successful part of their lives. Um, and, and granted they weren't very successful, but they came from the old school, you know, they were born in the, the turn of the century. So they've been through the depression. They've done, they've lived through all of those different things, a lot different than what it is today. I think we've, we've got a lot easier today from, you know, we all, sure. we all complain about what's going on, but what they've been through is just is astronomical. So, um, just learning from all of them. My mother, um, had all four of them living in our house. You know, she's, that's just the kind of person she was. What a message. What a yeah. lesson that is to teach your kids yeah. to go and take care of their elders and I, return I, to them what they've done. Wow. That's something that I think is, is gone by this generation. That's incredible. Absolutely. There was, there was another little lesson that she taught me, you know, I, growing up, I had, um, wealthy friends, family. We were, we lived in a nice town in uh, Cheshire, Connecticut. And it's kind of the bedroom community in New Haven. And, um, you know, I'd be like, Hey mom, why don't we have a Mercedes? And she was like, I could buy you 10 Mercedes, but I'd rather spend the money on you. Like, you know, back then it didn't make sense, but growing up, it's like, you know, it was more important about her kids and everything than having the status and all this stuff. So anyways, bringing it back, um, hockey players and business is a company or a nonprofit. It's out of Ohio. Gentlemen started it. And it's really about networking with, um, uh, other hockey players, we all play hockey at like men's leagues. Now these days, um, we're all playing together. We all know each other. It's a tight knit community. And the premise of this is, Hey, why don't we do business together? Because we all kind of know, you know, whether you're good or not, it gets around pretty quickly on, you know, how good your services is, what you can do. And, um, I, so I started the South Florida chapter. I was, um, elected the president, um, and we've, we have probably right now, we've only had a couple of events this year. Um, COVID kind of knocked us down a little bit, but I'm, I'm getting the membership back up, but we'll go to like a, a drive shack or a, a top golf. I, every, every Thanksgiving, I'll do a Thanksgiving skate from eight to 10 in the morning, gets 35, 40 people, um, bring them donuts, beers afterwards. Um, and it's a good way for the community to not only just play hockey together, but, you know, share business things. And I know for a fact that there's been a lot of business and network that's going on guys that are in the service business, home services, they're, you know, taking care of your pools, doing your roofing, doing your marble, um, and the financial attorneys there. It's all a lot of referrals going back and forth. Sure. So it's a great organization. It's amazing. People don't realize how many people actually from hockey world end up here. And yeah. I, I, yeah. I found it just incredible when I got down here because you couldn't walk the streets in Toronto mm -hmm. as a retired hockey player. If you, especially if you played for the Leafs. Sure. You can't go into a restaurant, right? Sure. I mean, mm -hmm. in the end, everybody's a person and they want them privacy and stuff like that. So it's really tough. Some people relish it. Some people are there all the time. Um, but it's tough. Whereas in Florida, I don't know if good, it's good or bad, you know, hockey is like still very much doesn't even crack the top 10. Sure. Right. If you had to say it. Sure. But it has an abundance of riches, great people when it comes to hockey. You see great coaches. You you see new rinks popping up. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a really cool place. And I'm sure there's a lot more here than people actually realize. Sure. That, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so you run that. Did you did I hear this right? You you're gonna be in a movie. <laughs> uh yeah. So <laughs> About six, seven years ago, a guy on, um, that I play against, uh, they, he called me up and he said, um, you know, hey, they're filming this hockey commercial down at uh, BB&T for Zurich Insurance. They need five or six guys. Do you want to come down? So my buddies, uh, Joel Z, Stevie, um, Mike Naga, a bunch of guys, and uh, Jimmy Boucher, we all went down there. And they filmed it. It was like a million dollar um, commercial, uh, which was we. You know, I've never I've never been in one. I never saw the back. You know how it's done and everything. So it was really cool. Um, and it was 
we were kind of a, it, it, me and my buddy, Jolzy, we got picked out of this to be like, it's from a Switzerland company. So we had these blonde wigs on. We got picked out of the group to wear these blonde wigs. It's really funny. And um, they filmed the commercial, you know, and that ran. And I kind of got into this casting group that was doing it. And pretty soon, every every year or so, I'd get a project or two. So I've been in five or six commercials that are like, you blink and no one sees you. But, uh, but uh, you know, it's just a background type of thing. But so about year and a half ago, I got a call. Um, they said, Hey, do you want to be in a movie with, um, Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor for Roadhouse? And I'm like, you know, let me think about it. Yeah. So, so the movie Roadhouse, they just remade it. Um, it took about a year to film. They flew me down to Dominican Republic. There's a fight scene in there. Um, it's kind of the second scene of the movie. I don't want to give away the movie, but for the most part, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is in it. There is, uh, I don't know if I can say this, but I'm going to say it anyways. Um, I, op I act across from Post Malone. So Post Malone is in the movie. Wow. He's, it's a cameo. No one knows it yet, but they know him now. Um, yeah, you're plugging the movie, dude. Plug, plug, plug wrong. When, the movie. When, is it, when is it supposed to come out? Well, they're having a little turmoil right now. They tried to get it to go in a theatrical version. They just they had it screened on Jeff Bezos' yacht to try to get it. And he said, now we're going to go to the prime. So there's a little in-road fighting. So I think it's coming out in the first quarter, first quarter next year. So out of the 300 people that were there, I got picked to be the guy that got beat up by <laughs> Post Malone. <laughs> So I've got a face that looks like I got hit by a truck and makeup and um, for eight hours and on one day, eight hours the next day, um, I had to sit there and yell and scream at Post Malone because, um, and I say like, fuck you and, and, and screaming at him. And uh, he totally changed my mind about who he was. I mean, no, no offense to him. He looks like a prison thug. He looks like he killed people. He's got the teardrops. His face is all up. And... Um, one of the sweetest guys I've ever met. He's a creative man. That's how he shows his creativity. It's how he does his jam, right? That's his part of his outlook. Yeah, yeah. He came over as apologizing to me for saying fuck you to me. And I'm like, it's a movie. I'm like, I don't care. And he's like, hey, man, I'm really sorry. I don't mean that. <laughs> That's like, really interesting. I'm like, so really, really nice guy. So long story short, I'm in that. Um, it, it's... Um, Coming out the first quarter next year. And, did you meet uh, McGregor? Um, did you meet Gyllenhaal? I, McGregor wasn't there. I did meet Gyllenhaal. So Gyllenhaal is in the scene. And uh, I think, it's, I don't know how much time I'm going to get, but I'm, I'm leaning over the octagon. It's, it's a, it's a bare knuckle fight. Um, Post Malone is fighting another guy. I was supposed to be the guy he just beat up. And then Gyllenhaal walks in and I won't get the rest of the movie, but yeah, all right. yeah, I'm definitely watching cool. it. You got to shoot me a text. When yeah. That's yeah, going yeah. Out. I can't you know, wait. To I'm see probably going to get this three second, you know, shot, but Hey, yeah, but think it, how many a, people can say that they did that. You're minimizing something that is yeah, so special yeah. and you don't know what you never knew that that commercial would lead to that. Who knows yeah. next? Maybe I'm sitting next to the next Hollywood's <laughs> eight list right there. A couple of years. That's, that's yeah, what I'll be yeah. saying. I don't I had him on the podcast. <laughs> you, you never know. You're, you're you, right. You never know. Right. And it's pretty fucking cool. man. Appreciate it. Dude. So, You've got this, the app that we talked about. Um, can you remind everyone the name, the, the name of the app? Sure. It's called Photo Op. And you've got something that's coming up with it right now, right? You have to. A week from uh, today, I'm presenting in Boston in front of 150 investors, probably 1,000 attendees. Is it for a raise? Are you guys looking for a it's, raise? It's for a raise, you know, looking for exposure, strategy, um, people with strategic uh, relationships in the broadcasting and media world. That's what will help us grow. Um, so we're. I'm, prepa I'm preparing the, all this week for that presentation. And I haven't done that in a while, so it's going to be, uh, I might have a couple of cocktails before, and we'll see. Really? <laughs> That's so scary. That I got to go, get the nerves off a little that bit. That can go another way. You don't look, you don't look I said a me, couple, not, not like, you know. You don't look to me like you're scared of public speaking. I think that in of itself, going to the generation that mm -hmm. of kids that are coming up because they're so used to, to this screens and technology, you can say whatever you want behind this. Sure. There's no accountability. But yeah. to those that can communicate properly, to those that can look somebody in the eye, read body language, tone, they can present their ideas. They have a huge competitive advantage over everybody else who's coming out. Some, hey, look, some people are just not made for it and are brilliant in their own way. Sure. But I think it's a huge competitive advantage to be able to communicate in a public setting in front of people. Because I, I mean, I'm going to butcher this, but I know it's up there that public speaking is up there with like some of the biggest fears that are that humans carry with them, like sure. jumping out of a plane is something I wouldn't do. I'm afraid of heights. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm claustrophobic, but public speaking is not one of them. Yeah. Right. It also depends if, you, if you're a subject matter expert and you know what you're talking about. Makes it easier. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it makes things a whole, whole lot easier. Mm -hmm. All right. So you got all this shit going on. <laughs> How do you keep up? Um, I, it's in my makeup. I guess um, 
I'm, I'm used to doing a lot of things. And uh, I, I was one of those guys in school that could just show up and do well. I mean, BC. Sports or education? Both. Both. So it was. Did you play any other sports but hockey? It was all hockey. I played a little bit of baseball in uh, uh, prep school. You had to play three sports. I had to pick one. I played baseball. I did okay. I could I could hit the ball, um, but it wasn't my passion. So hockey was twenty four seven. I played it for fifty two years. I'm, I'm playing my fourth game in a, in a row tonight. I'm in four leagues right now, so I still play it. I love I love the game. I have a buddy. Um, his name is Elad. Yes. That no mo. He's a he's junkie. in hockey players in business. Yeah. He's a junkie. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how do you do this? Yeah. The yeah. other day he showed me at a splint on his finger. <laughs> and he's still playing. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to play. <laughs> like, you got to be kidding. Your wife must hate you. <laughs> if, it, yeah. if it's not falling off or broken, you know, you, let's go. But he just, he says to me, it's my place of Zen. Mm-hmm. Right. It's my, like, that's how I feel right now when I, when I watch my son. Guy, guys going to a gym, you know, that's yeah. your place, you know, yeah. whatever it is. You got to do something. Yeah. You mentioned in the last podcast, if you don't use it, you lose it. Mm-hmm. Right. If you're not, if, as you get older, it's harder to restart. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's, there's, there's something like that you have to do for your own peace of mind and sanity. I think that this is the biggest drug that we are now all mainlining. Mm-hmm. And for that hour, you're not on this phone. Right. And there's just that alone, I think is cathartic. Sure. Sure. And I'm, I'm one of those guys on the phone. So it's, it's good and bad. I'm not on there playing games, although a couple of times, you know, it gives you a little bit of escape, but for the most part it's business. So you can, what used to be your laptop, you know, this is my laptop now, so I can run multiple things. I've got six different email addresses. I've got all kinds of things in order to separate it and compartmentalize everything so that you can do multiple things, you know, all at once. So are you active on social media? I was more so, um, uh, um, you know, I, I think I've slowed down a little bit, but it's kind of like if something happens, that's kind of, uh, interesting. I'll throw it out there. Um, but I'm, I'm not like scrolling away, reading everybody, but I've, I've been on there. Some people so, call me, you just call me Mr. Facebook. Oh really? But, but not so much anymore. It's, it's, I'm too much business right now. I used to be a Facebook junkie. Now I don't even think I touch it. It's Instagram yeah. overwhelmingly. It's Instagram. Yep. Um, but I mean, there's so many tools out there that I don't even know how to use. Like, like LinkedIn, for example, yeah. you mentioned is something that you use often. Yeah. So, so LinkedIn came about and, and I'll step back. Um, there was, when I transitioned from, um, the financial investment world, I got into the, um, marketing world. And so I, I got involved with a company here in Boca and, uh, this was, I learned so much in Silicon Valley in regards to the internet, how to set up websites, how to set up lead gen websites, that when I got to this job as a data business, I ended up, you know, they teach you how to be a salesperson anywhere you go, but I'm always the think outside the box. How do I build my business? How do I make it more efficient? How do I grow it? I created a website for, at the time we were going after mortgage brokers that were going after what they call trigger leads. And I set this up where every Friday, the trigger list, the amount of trigger list by state would come out. And a trigger list is basically, if you applied for a mortgage in Boca, uh, the credit bureaus basically sell your name to all the mortgage companies and the banks in the country. Um, you may, people don't know that, but that's what they do. And so what the banks will do is say, okay, I want to know all the people that have a 750 score that live in Boca, that have two kids and have three parents and, or not two parents and three kids or whatever the number is. Um, and that's their target audience. We then our, we had the data. We would sell that to the mortgage company. They're the ones that send you all the mail pieces. Um, but their their targeted audience is you're their ideal person. They know how to reach you. In that process, I learned what data meant. And I'll, I'll touch upon this later, but um, it became a, if data was king, you first had to find out who your target audience was in order to mail to them. Then you had the mail piece. So you had to come up with what the creative was and what the offer is. So the offer is usually like a, a um, you know, an interest rate that not many people can attain. Um, the offer would be something like, you know, get your 30 year mortgage for this rate, blah, blah, blah. So that created this. And in, in my whole process in the last 20 years, I came up with a book that I'm going to write. It's called analyze, strategize, execute, repeat, analyze the data, analyze who you're going after, strategize, put the creative again. How are you going to get those people execute the campaign? go back and repeat the process. I'm going to now analyze everything I did on that campaign, what worked, what didn't work, adjust the data, adjust the creative, and then go from there. 
that kind of thing that I've created over the last 15, 20 years for my own mindset works in hockey. It works in um, business. It works across, uh, well, uh, I'll get this to women. Does um, it? Women. Huh. Um, well, <laughs> I have a beautiful girlfriend right now. And, uh, prior to that, and after being getting divorced, um, you know, you, you, you walk into a bar, you analyze it, you know, uh, who's, who's the person that you want to meet the most, you know, you strategize on what you're going to say to say to her, you go over there and you execute. It doesn't work. That's fine. But what'd you learn? you learn something so that the next time you go around and, and try to meet someone or whatever, you repeat the process. And then pretty soon you start to come up with this thing that kind of works, you know, so. I'm not taking any notes. I'm, I'm punching <laughs> anyway, well happily, above my weight. Happily married. Yeah. Happily, yeah, I'm married. happily married and punching well above my weight. But you asked on how it, how it yeah, did yeah. It with women, but same thing with business, same thing with hockey. It's all about analyze, strategize, execute, repeat. I, I use that religiously throughout everything I do. I didn't get back to LinkedIn, but getting back to LinkedIn, um, Creating this uh, lead gen system for myself, the company came to me and said, we want to offer this to the whole group. And I've done that with five or six different companies. And that process also worked on LinkedIn, which was, if you get on Fiverr, you can, if you get on Fiverr, uh, there's plenty of people on there that you can, you know what Fiverr is? Yeah, yeah I yeah. used it, I mean, infrequently, but I have used it you know, yeah. a couple of dozen times. There's Fiverr, there's, there's a few other ones. You're basically getting consultants for pennies on the dollar. It's not so cheap anymore, but it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. But in overall, you know, I, I hate to say, you know, you're not using American workers, but you can in certain instances, it's, it's everybody. But if I can get something done on my budget, you know, create a video, create a landing page, create whatever it is. Um, they're very good at it. So my, my, um, thing to people that might be listening is, um, if you don't know how to do some of these things to generate leads and grow your business, that's a great place to start. You still need the formula on how to do it, but for the most part, there's a lot of people on there that you can hire that can create you landing pages, lead gen pages, you know, edit your videos uh, for social media, all kinds of things. That's a huge wealth of things that I tapped into. One of the things that I did for LinkedIn to grow my business, um, I was at Kathy Allen at the time, um, got a guy in Bangladesh. Uh, he logs in on LinkedIn as myself overnight. You're allowed to send, I think, 80, it used to be 200 a night invitations to people in my target audience. So I would say when I was with Kathy Ireland, I want CEOs across the country. I want to know, um, you know, in certain industries, this is who I'm going after. This is my pitch. I work with Kathy Ireland. I'm looking to grow my, um, you know, uh, if you're looking to grow your company or you want to um, you know, get your distribution, whatever the pitch was. And this guy would send it out. And every morning I'd have five or 10 people that connected with me, another five or 10 that were say, Hey, I want to have a conversation with you. And that's what exploded my LinkedIn from a few thousand to 17,000. I, 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 it could be 30,000, but I, I don't need that particular thing right now in that networking. So I'm not pushing it right now. Um, and through that whole process, LinkedIn came back and said, wow, you're really knowing how to use our system. They made me a, an official LinkedIn advisor. So every month they send me every, probably once or twice a month, they'll send me, they want my feedback on what people would respond to in their messaging. So if, if they're going to start a new LinkedIn program, how to generate leads, um, they have like five different headlines, five different ways to name it. And they're asking my, I'm one of probably a hundred or a thousand people but they're basically doing a, a um, what is it called? The group focus group right. on, you know, what we should use. And so I've been working on that for like three or four years. So that's what I'm doing. LinkedIn. Dude, I actually, you just, you just brought up a bunch of things that I didn't, didn't think were in your wheelhouse that I'll definitely have to speak to you about offline because LinkedIn is one of those tools that I know is very targeted, uh, professional and, and it has a higher quality of leads when you get them. Mm -hmm versus Facebook leads, which are cheap and you can get many depending which, which business you're on. But if you don't have a good follow-up strategy. If you don't have a, you know, a top funnel, bottom of funnel approach where you know what you're doing, it's wasted money. Yep. And most of those leads are just people looking for free information. That's as far as that's willing to go. Sure. But it's, you can get many of them. So if you're looking to fill a database with names and numbers, it's probably the place to go. But if you're looking to generate business, I don't know enough about LinkedIn. Um, but I think it's something I don't use nearly enough. It's, it's uh, real B2B focus and um, uh, no offense to LinkedIn, but the advertising is astronomical. So trying to go that route is um, within LinkedIn, within LinkedIn. So if you're trying to do ads on LinkedIn, it's pretty expensive. So um, these are techniques of you sign up for their sales navigator. It gives you a lot more access to people's information that you can contact. 
Um, you know, they want the $99 a month and then they open up the coffers for you. Um, but there's plenty of people, um, out there that have done like the screen scraping, the gathering information. I can get a thousand emails tomorrow of every CEO, you know, in South Florida, um, that you can start to contact and use different things. So there's, there's different methods to use LinkedIn, um, especially for B2B that are not necessarily using the advertising route and things like that. So. Um, well, I have so much to pick your brain about. Yeah, no problem. I, I didn't even realize. Is that something like you do? Do you provide, do you provide consulting information, like services and stuff like that? Uh, I, I, I don't know when, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's usually on a case by case basis. Uh, since I've been raising money for different companies for thirty something years, they'll hire me as a consultant to do something. You know, they'll offer me equity. I'm always, um, I'm like, uh, give me six months. I don't want to, I don't want to discuss the equity today. Let me show you what I can do for you in six months. You know, you, you make me an offer or whatever. That's pretty much how I work. Uh, on a consultant basis, happy to take on and help grow companies. I do it all day long from, you know, the, the most recent one, we were doing some social media for a pizza joint. Um, great pizza. Portnoy came down. I beats. I'll give him a plug here in, here in uh, Del Rey. He did come down? Yeah. Check it out. Portnoy came down, gave him an 8.4. Um, these are New Haven guys. That's my that's my uh, neck of the woods. That's where I grew up. That's where I, uh, in, in and around that area. And um they make great pizza. So, but working with them, you know, in two and a half months, we doubled their following on Instagram. Um, my girlfriend, who's a, um, is that who you work with, with your girl? Yeah. I work with my girl. She's, um, you know, I'll give her a little plug. She's a uh, former Miss world Finland in 2014. Um, Good boy, you yeah. are punching above your way, boy. You got a strategy that or do the same thing. I did is Rufalin. analyze, strategize, <laughs> execute, repeat. <laughs> uh, She's the love of my life, my soulmate. Um, uh, fantastic with her. I'm, I'm moving in with her now, so it's uh, it's going to the next level. Um, but she runs social media for a large company in Finland, um, and on the side, her and I are putting together different social. media I gotta have her on the podcast. Absolutely, yeah. She's she's fantastic. Yeah, she's so humble. She's uh, I'm very very lucky guy. I think I think good relationships generally start off when one person feels like the other one's too good for them. You know, and I'm not saying that they are. I just you want to feel like. You know, yeah. you're, you're constantly chasing that because it's a, it's, it's, it's a, listen, you've been, you've been married before, you know, you've been married for a long time and, mm-hmm. and I mean, it's brave of you to, I mean, everybody wants to be with somebody, but I didn't know, moving in and yeah. that's like, that's like all, all quasi marriage <laughs> minus the, yeah. the big party and the certificate. I have no problem doing that. She's, you've got a beautiful daughter. I've raised two daughters. Um, you know, other people might say, uh, you know, uh, uh, she, she, <laughs> I love when she's, she's from Finland. So she messes up words. So she'll, she'll say like, yeah, my daughter, she's got luggage. She's my luggage. I'm like, no, you mean baggage. And like, <laughs> so she has all these little sayings that we just, we, we just crack up about that. Uh, that I just, she's so genuine. I, I love her to death. So, Listen to me. Yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Yo, do you want to coach? Do you want to coach <laughs> hockey? If, if I would, had, you, I mean, with all that, like with all the stuff that you're doing, I get new, but you obviously have like a passion for it. Would you ever coach hockey again? Youth hockey? Uh, so her and I have had the conversation about having more kids and I'm a little older and she's a little younger. Um, and, uh, I Biggest think his blessing that I, exists. I think there. if we had a child, a boy or girl, I would probably get back into coaching. Sure. I, I just don't have the time. Oh, no, you don't have time to, today. I don't have time. Yeah, having a kid will <laughs> free up all that time. Yeah. You, you know, this, right. All of a sudden but it's, it's not off the table. So, um, wow. it, d- down the road I, I would, I enjoy it. Um, but, um, not just not today. Dude, I, <laughs> I, 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 I'm now trying to think of all the time that you don't have and having a kid, but, but it's also, it's what you prioritize in your life mm-hmm. and having a kid, having, you know, happy, healthy kids is, is the best blessing in the world. I, I thought I, I, when I got married, I became a man, you know, you say certain stages in your life, you become a man until yep. so you have kids. Yeah. You don't become a man. Yeah. At least that's in my perspective, because when you have to care for somebody else for the rest of their lives, mm-hmm. the responsibilities are totally different. Yeah. Holy fuck. Do you mature and age fast? Yeah. Right. And, and we, each generation tries to learn from the other one, but each generation has its own ta- challenges. Like you, you said that, you know, we have it much easier than our parents did. Right. And they have it easier than their grandparents did and, and so on and so forth. Like, I mean, life has, we working towards a softer generation, which is some way I feel kind of backfiring on us some way. Sure. But we have challenges like, like technology screens that we're not ready, nor are we equipped to, to handle. Sure. Because I've seen it a hundred times over at this point. Um, 
you give a screen to a child and you lost them. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Yep. And it, and taking that away from them, mm-hmm. they, there's like an actual struggle. Like they'll fight for it. But you, the same reaction that a drug addict would if you, if you automatically took them off. Right. And it is terrifying. And I don't know how to do it. I, and I mean, right now, the way we're figuring it out is we're just over programming. Yeah. And we're getting them to do everything else. So TV's not watched in our house during the week. Sure. During the weekend, too much TV, mm-hmm. but that's where it stays. Right. 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 I'm, I'm, I don't know how to parent through this. I've talked to a lot of parents. Everybody eventually gives in. Right. I'm still worried about when my first kid comes back and someone in their class are, is going to have a, a phone. Like, oh, shit. What do I do now? Right. I do know one guy vis-a-vis the hockey world. I, I won't mention his name just for his own privacy, but I think he is like a 15 year old daughter that still doesn't have a phone. Mm. How'd you do that? Yeah. Wow. That's gotta be a challenge. Yeah. It's gotta be a, like, it's gotta be a constant challenge for her. She's got a burner phone in her backpack. No, Probably. I'm just, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. I mean, she's I'm somewhere. Kidding. She sees it. That's but great I mean, though. No, that's great. But she, when she gets, a, I mean, I want to say a little bit older when she becomes like, you know, her own parent and, and then she starts to parent. I think she will appreciate that alone. Sure. Because it's terrifying to me, man. The, the amount of information, yep. how people can bully one another. Sure. Um, especially with females where people can just say all yeah. kinds of things. I, I mean, you have two daughters. Yep. You, yep. How'd you deal with the first time that some boy knocked on your door and wants to take your daughter out? <laughs> um, knock on wood. Um, there's not many things that make me tear up, but it's my daughters. Ooh, I'm already starting. Um, mm. they're, they're the best. I was watching, I was at my daughter's dance recital. I uh, had to hold back tears the water, whole time. Water, waterworks. Yeah. They're, uh, the guys, the fathers and the daughters, all bets are off. Yeah. I, um, I used to tell someone that, uh, having them too is like Christmas every morning. So for, for me, I get up, I got a present right there every day. What so, a great outlook. Yeah. So, um, again, knock on wood, uh, they were saints. Um, their mother was a principal at an elementary school. Great, great mom, you know, taught them well, as did I. Um, but we got lucky. I, I you know, I, I hear the horror stories of sure. getting, I think, you know, there's a lot of things you learn the long way. They, they used to say you're the sum of the five friends that you're, you're friends with, right? I say that all the time. Yeah. So the average of your friends. Um, so they always made great decisions. I think we spent a lot of time, a lot of time with them doing all kinds of activities, a lot of very family oriented. Um, it wasn't always like, Hey, I'm going out to a party or something. And they just didn't get caught up in that. So very focused on whether the little one, uh, Sierra was in dance, the older one was in softball and basketball. They were occupied. They were doing things. Um, I, I don't think the, even though the phone was around, it wasn't as big, you know, whatever, 15 years ago. Now it's like all there is, you know, I watch some of my, um, not some necessarily nieces, but other kids four years old, they got an iPad, you know, it's already starting three or four Negative years old. in my house. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, um, you know, it's, it's, is different every 10 years. It seems like technology, it just goes even much further than it was, you know, 80 years ago. What's it going to be 20 years from now? What yeah. is, what's it going to be when your daughters have kids? Um, I mean, I, I mean just, we're, we're going <laughs> to. Between AI and, and so, what are your thoughts on about, about AI? I ask people all the time. Sure, I am terrified. Yeah, it's a slippery slope. I mean, the only thing that's probably going to beat the bad AI is good AI. So we better come up with something that um, has the power to combat if somebody starts to use it on the other side of the world in the wrong way. I just saw today they're rolling off a factory to start humanoids. So these uh, cyber, you know, robots or whatever, I just saw the factory that they're building. I don't know if it's in China or somewhere over there, but- To create humans with AI? No, humanoids, they're calling it. So it's basically a robot with AI in it. So, so the Terminator. Yeah, I mean, pretty much without a, without a conscious- Fuck off. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. So um, <laughs> I, I uh, like or hate him, Elon. I, I like Elon Musk. I, I kind of listen to things that he says and- um, uh, it's a slippery slope. You know, I can see where it could go really bad really quickly, especially with, you know, our, our partners, not partners, our, our nut jobs on the other side of the world that uh, could certainly use this in the, in the in nefarious way. ways. Yeah. And the thing that we're talking about is like, it's our understanding of what we know of AI, but guys like Elon Musk and, 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 and the owners of Sergey Brin and Larry Page and, yep. you know, these, these Mark Zuckerberg, like, I, we, that's the world we know, right? Yep. In North America, you know, 
China and, and, and you don't the Middle East has, you know, yep. so much riches and building some cool things. What we understand is AI is what they knew of AI like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so it's probably so much more advanced. And when they're scared <laughs> of stuff like that, we should all be petrified. And we're leaving, you know, a huge segment of this to people that understand it even less. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and when, like you mentioned, Alon, when he said we should be scared, uh, that's when I, my ears perk up because I, I think the guy's a genius. Um, I, you know, genius. I, I do think he has, you know, the best interest of, you know, at least Americans, if not the whole globe of doing things the right way, you know, I'm sure he's done crazy things or whatever, but, um, I just think he has a pretty good handle on it. Uh, in regards to AI though, I've started to use it and it's, in what way? it's amazing. Um, chat GPT, chat GPT, uh, Bing is, um, you haven't used that one. Bing uses chat BT for chat BT wants to charge you for the point. The, the right. Four. It's 3.5 now yeah. for free. Yeah. So the three or 3.5 is, um, they, they loaded up all the information up till 20, 2021. So it doesn't go into, um, I think chat BT four, if I said, go analyze Ronan's website, right. Come back to me and give me a summation of everything that's on there. Um, you got to pay for that at chat BT four. So Bard, which is Bard.google, that's Google's. That one is really good. Yeah. And Bing, the two of those, you can do full websites. You can upload a presentation, say, make it better. Um, there's just a lot of things in there. If I want to say, you know, when I'm doing my presentation, um, what's the, what's the average uh, cost for running a digital ad? Um, and it, it spits out yeah. with the references where it got it from. And it's just a, it's just an easy, quick way of saving you hours of going to do that research. So that's my thing. I think we are going, it, I, th I think that AI is going to be like a Renaissance. It's actually what is going to beat inflation versus mon monetary policy mm -hmm. and, and fiscal policy. I think you're going to see things that are going to eliminate some of the labor mm -hmm. that is really, really expensive and specialized. So, we will hail this as the greatest thing on earth. And we become so dependent that we will outsource our thinking mm -hmm. for to make our life easier, to free up our most valuable asset, which is time. Mm -hmm. And then we will become so addicted to everything that AI does because you see like fragmented things that AI is doing. Anything you can think of today at this point, AI is, or there's a tool for you to use it. Sure. Still, it's in its infancy, but it is out there. Yeah. I'm, I'm invested in a whole bunch of AI stock mm -hmm. that is hugely volatile. So what I've done is like, I'm not trying to pick winners. I mm -hmm. took a, a the set, whole group. Yeah, yeah. And I just bought a whole bunch of them mm -hmm. and just left it. Yep. Right. I've been sitting on it and it's done like it is volatile. Yeah. Right, Because there will be a consolidation of all of these businesses and they're so nuanced from like... AI that reads your voice and what it, what the applications that can do AI that can actually teach you whatever it is that you want to learn. And like I've, I've made mock podcasts, my team as well of my own voice. It is scariest fucking thing you've ever seen. Wow. I played it to my wife mm -hmm. and I said, what do you think? Which one's me or whatever. Yeah. Because of my, she knows me so well, my, my mannerisms, my demeanor, you know, mm -hmm. my tone and connotation, which still hasn't picked up on. She's like, almost sounds like you, but yeah. it's not you. Yeah. yeah but yeah. to somebody who doesn't know. Yeah. They wouldn't know. Right. Yeah. And he's, and all you got to do is you got to read a bunch of passages. It, it reads your name, but once it's out there, it's out there just like our face ID, all that stuff. It's out there and it's out there for good. Sure. Right. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm so, we have pictures, you know, my wife posts of our kids and on social media and stuff like that. And I'm like, shit's got to get scaled back. Yeah. I don't know who's looking Yeah, and I don't know who's watching and I'm, I'm not scared of a world that is advancing. I'm scared of how stupid I am when it comes to actually what's coming. Yeah. Yeah. It's the unknown fear of the unknown that, uh, we don't know where it's going. And that's the thing that you can't like when, when your kids are playing sports, they're not thinking about that. They're sure. doing what they need to do and move their bodies. Mm -hmm. When your kids are in, in a group setting, sports uh, specifically teaches you so many skills from from being with teammates and being a, a part of a community and all that sort of stuff. That that's where I think like you see this massive surge of um, of both costs and and parents putting their kids on various sports until they pick one. Sure. Right. So like, you know, I, I'd, I'd like to take some parenting advice from you about what it's like raising two daughters. I got two daughters myself, and I know that I am already like. 
behind them of how intellectually, emotionally, um, their emotional IQ is far superior to mine. Yeah. Okay. Girls are totally different. Yeah. Um, I, I guess a couple thoughts are, um, I, I think what we're seeing from my mother's generation and her, and her parents' generation to our generation is kids are becoming smarter sooner where they know things more than their parents about certain things. I'm not talking about the raising them a certain way. I'm talking about like the technology and how to use the internet and, and all of these different things. It's different because back in my parents and their day, it was, you know, I taught you how to change your oil. I taught you how to, you know, um, you know build a house, whatever it was. And it was like, they never knew that. But now with these phones and everything that's going on the internet, you know, kids are like, you know, am I going to go to college when I can go do a podcast or, you know, make money this way? So an there's influencer. like an influencer, you know, there's a thousand different ways and all day long they're scrolling and they, there's a thousand influencers on there that are showing them here's the easy way to make a buck. And it's changing their the kids outlook of I can go do this instead of the old sit in the nine to five in a cubicle. So I'm torn between. Um, I love the best parts about it, about, uh, the technology and what it can do because, um, I'm tired. I was tired of sitting in a, in a cubicle and the ability to go create and do things that we would all enjoy passionately more so than that, that part I kind of like about it. Um, you know, bad parts of what you're talking about, certainly you want to avoid them. You don't want your kids scrolling mindlessly all day long and all they do is play video games and, you know, watch Roblox or play Roblox or whatever they do. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, uh, we're learning as we go along, I think, um, to how to combat and how to limit that. I think what you're doing is fantastic. So if you're saying, Hey, you don't get this during the week, you limit it. I, I don't think they're just totally engaged in just scrolling and doing everything. So, you know, your life would make a really interesting biography. <laughs> we've, we've, We've hit on a bunch of things, and I think we've also just just kind of between being in the movies, the consulting, trying to raise capital. Like, what else are you doing? <laughs> um, what else? Uh, I mean, those are my those are the things business wise, hockey wise that I'm doing. Um, I, I can talk just a little bit upon you know other passions. You know, we talked a little bit about house music. <laughs> um, I, Tiesto. I, Tiesto. I, I grew up um, at a very early age. Uh, my buddy Berkeley uh, played hockey with me. We ended up going to this um, underage dance bar, and <laughs> and it's it sounds crazy, but that's when I got the bug of you know dance music. And so since '83, I think it was you know I think Michael Jackson was out back then. You know, if, truth be told, I had a Michael Jackson jacket. You know, you still that's, have that's it? yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, it's on my wall in a case. No, um, but uh, that's where I got the. Who the, wasn't into Michael Jackson? Yeah, right? exactly. He but, revolutionized. He created a genre. Him and him and uh, Madonna on the other side. That yeah, was, that was like the '80s. Was uh, I like to say we ruined it for everybody because we had a free for all that we could get, we got to do whatever we wanted, and then pretty soon, you know, unfortunately whole i won't even go into it but it got like it got like what are we talking about aids i mean like things like oh it was it was so crazy and people were having so much fun that uh you know it was kind of like somebody slapping us down and saying slow down i just had a conversation about larry flint the other day mm -hmm. um and uh, you just brought brought that up and uh, yeah i mean i i was too young to understand that mm -hmm. um I, I, I actually remember throwing my my parents off and asking what's aids mm -hmm. Oh, fuck, I was a really little, young kid. Yeah. And they were like, uh, the, the old school generation. Like, uh, fuck, don't they teach you that in school? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So it was a, uh, it was a, uh, it was a crazy time. Um, but the dance music stayed with me forever. And yeah, I've been to, people have heard of it, Ultra. I've been there 16 times. I, I can't get enough. I, um, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like the old guy there, but I don't give a shit. I love the music. I love hanging out with my friends. And, uh, you know, Tiesta, I've seen, you know, who's actually the, ever the only old guy there, <laughs> the creeper who's hitting on younger chicks. Dude, that's not me. Right. Yeah, the yeah. one who's hitting on younger women yeah. that just want to be left alone and, yep. and they're beautiful and they yeah. want to dance and they don't want to feel that's the old guy. That's the me. guy who's enjoying the music and he's there with his bodies and yeah. he's having a good time. And they're all like, you're not supposed to stop loving something because yeah. you get to a certain age yeah. or, you know, you're like, you're also not partying 24 hours. Like some of these guys or gals are going right. Like, yeah. The old guy is the one who's being 
creepy. Yeah, he's the one that it's, I'm afraid of around kids. It's, it's usually not in that scene. I, I could, I, I mean, it's uh, what I love about that scene. It's all positive. You know, I, I had my rap days, but it's a little bit too. That's uh, me, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I appreciate more of the the Snoop Dogg years than I do today. But that that's all good. But you never going to ultra, you never see fights, right. you never see, you know, guns, you never see any of these things that's going on because it's a different, it's all about peace and love and happiness. And it's, uh, that's what I love about the community. So I'm, I'm always going to follow it. I have a good Tiesto story. So I, I told both my daughters that, um, I would, when they graduated, I take them to ultra. So the first one came, um, Taylor, I took her to ultra we had a great time. Um, the second one graduated three or four years later, Sierra, and so I buy these tickets from online from some guy from South Carolina and he rips me off for 600 bucks. So I'm like, Oh man, this sucks. I tweeted Tiesto. I said, Tiesto. I said, I've been coming to see you for 12, 13 years. No, and here it comes. <laughs> I've been, I've been coming to see you for 12 or 13 years. Um, I know this is a long shot, but if there's anything you can do, I'd be ever forever in your debt. Well, next day I get an email from his tour manager and he says, listen, Todd, we read your post. You got two tickets for you and your girl. We'll call waiting for you to come see the show tomorrow. What? And I, I was like, oh, I was like, this is this guy is so amazing to you know give a shit about me and my daughter that I was just like so moved by the guy. I saw him last Friday at Live with uh, a bunch of buddies of mine. I think I'm going to see him this Friday at Dare. Um, but my and my daughter's like, Daddy, I'm like the most popular girl at school. And Tiesto gave me tickets, you know. So I'm like, Yeah, hey, one for dad, you know. So that's anyway. a super cool dad move. Yeah. <laughs> I, wait, wait, was it? I mean, it, I took a shot at it, and you never know. No, no, no. The fact work. that you took her. Yeah, you know, I'm I, not talking about yeah, like. Yeah. I, I actually I, I had a weird story. It was I was very close to my nephews before I got married and had kids, and I and I got tickets from a scalper to take. Uh, I think it was LeBron James' first game in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Um, against the Raps and the Raps were a very young team at that time and I've got this this seven year old or eight year old and, and we take it from Scalper we get to the gate and they're like they're counterfeit oh. and I just spent also I think 600 uh, bucks this uh, is going on yeah. you know a while ago yeah. and I was so visibly devastated and the little guy's like we can't go uh. Usher took us right in put us right behind the bench found us seats that he knew weren't and he's like cool he goes don't tell anybody <laughs> coolest move ever. And if karma means anything, yeah. you know, I hope that that's come back to him. Oh, absolutely. I, 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 I love stories like that. Yeah. I'll never forget it because I was so upset. First I was pissed off that I got ripped off. Yeah. Right. But I also hyped this up so big and I want to be that cool uncle and I want to take him. And I don't even know if my nephew, Mark, even if you're listening to this, he even remembers <laughs> this, but like he was so cute and, and, and he stayed up late and like, yep. I would have had to take him to TV and tell him that's what basketball looks like. <laughs> you went to see LeBron. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's but awesome. Th- there's, there's, I have uh, that you're, you're a good dad, man. You're a good guy. I, 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 I think that, um, with all the bullshit and madness that's going on in the world, fear mongering and all this nonsense. Um, I think most people are out to do good and help each other. I yep. think you, you get a lot more doing good for others than you do just for yourself. Yeah. It's a very, it's a selfish act to be kind because you are rewarded yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think we have enough of it because <laughs> I think I've told people moving down from Toronto is Florida's different. Yeah. Like I think people are, are a lot more cautious here um, get within the circle and network. And I've, I've been already a victim of a couple of people that are not so good. Mm-hmm. It wasn't anything major, but yeah. still, you know, from an air conditioner to a few yeah. other things. Yeah. Um, and if you're kind and nice to people here, it either freaks them out or they look at it as weakness. Mm-hmm. I don't want to change my character and I'm by no means soft. Sure. But I will give everybody the benefit of the doubt if yeah. they say something that they're going to do. Sure. Right. And I don't think enough people do that here. And when I ask people why, they're like, it's all the New Yorkers. I'm like, mm, I know a lot of New Yorkers. They're at least tell you in your face. Yeah. If they're going to fuck you. They know. Yeah. Yeah. You like know, they tell you, know you where coming. I'm from. Like you, you don't belong here. Yeah. And I don't know what it is in, in Florida, but I, it I can think be it's, tough. I, 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 do you know I, what I'm talking about? I, absolutely. I've been here for 20 years. Um, but what I would say is that, uh, it's a melting pot down here. I mean, literally, you've got half the world that owns peace property here. 
So you've got sure. all, all different walks of life. I think the community in Boca is different than the community in Jupiter, which is different than Miami. So it's kind of like which enclave and which group, you know, are you going to be a part of? And there's all different things between all of them. So, um, but there's a lot of transient people to get to your point. That's probably it. Yeah. You know, they, they've, uh, you know, they don't have the roots. They don't have the reputation they have to worry about. So they can fly by the seat, the seat of their pants and, you know, try to make a buck and screw somebody, which, you know, I'm zero part of, I want no part of that. I, you know, my, my word is my bond and I'd rather have you judge me on, you know, what I can do for you than how I made a few bucks. You know, I just, I just don't like it. So, um, but yeah, it's, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have a lot of good people down here in network. And it, I, it goes back to the hockey community. These are people that, um, so important. They're, they're the same people from Connecticut to, to Canada to around the globe. There's just a certain makeup of you of doing the right thing. And it's about the whole, as opposed to just you. And that helps you make a lot of decisions in life that I think, uh, maybe other groups just don't get if you're not part of a group and you don't know how to be a team player and it's all about you, then, you know, you, you do the, uh, the old survival thing. You do what's, you know, what you think is the way to survive. And if that means making a shortcut then you know, unfortunately I think that's where people go wrong. But. Well, I think the transient part you hit on the head because then there's no accountability, right? Yeah, Versus, exactly. you know, if you're doing business with a guy who you're in the dressing room with mm -hmm. and things went wrong. Like they got to look at you and say, listen, I fucked up. I'm sorry. Or you just like, don't do business with that guy. Lesson learned. And maybe he's a good hockey player, but that's as far as that goes. Sure. Right. But there's, once there's accountability, which there isn't enough of today, cause there's so much mm -hmm. nasty activity flying online. Yeah, yeah. Um, you gotta be, you gotta be careful. I mean, there's, there's an AI going back to that. will pose new challenges from identity theft and, and everything in between. Sure. There's tons of bots online now. There's like the, 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 there seems to be wars fought on Instagram. Yeah. You know, just propaganda and what's real, what's not. TikTok I hear is the worst for, and I'm not even on it. Yeah. I mean, not, at least not active. I have the app. I very infrequently, I'm addicted to Instagram enough. That, sure. that I just don't have brain yeah, yeah. space or time for my, another one. My, my kids tell me I'll send them a, a, a video meme or whatever. And they'll be like, Oh, that was on TikTok three weeks ago. So that's like where everything starts and then it makes its way over Instagram. But yeah, I'm not, uh, there's different age groups and different things. You know, there's only so many slip and falls and goofy videos that you can watch. But <laughs> you know, when somebody sends it, you know, I, I like and appreciate humor. I, sh you know, I'll share it with buddies, but it's not like my entire life of doing that. So but um, I want to tell you one more story. Tell me. <laughs> this is a good story. I know we're getting towards the end, so I wanted to get it in. So there is one little thing that I'm pretty good at, <laughs> and that's drinking beers. So I can. <laughs> 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 so I was not expecting for you to say that. <laughs> so and how do you define good? Like what is it volume? Is no, it? it? It's all at once. So chugging a beer at once. Oh, okay. I, I'm, I'm probably. 300 and zero or one, there might be one guy, but he probably cheated. Um, so <laughs> I got recruited by Kathy Ireland and, um, we get pulled into this room and, uh, she's in LA with her group. She's on an iPad or they're on a video screen. There's 15 or 20 there people in our side in Boca. There's 15 or 20 people in the room. And, uh, I was the last one to go. She said, I'm going to pass this iPad around. I'm going to ask you one question. And you got to answer it. And then at the end of it, she was going to hire like out of the 20 people, like six or seven people. So, <laughs> so they're going around and I'm thinking, you know, okay, I'm going to lay out all my accolades, you know, some of the things I've done, you know, I'm proud of or whatever. And we get all the way around and the guy before me says, well, he goes, I was in the circus for 15 years. And so everybody's screaming and laughing and I'm like, oh, motherfucker. So he goes, <laughs> so I'm like, how am I going to follow this? I'm like, well, forget it. I'm going to go for it. So she goes, uh, well, Todd, what is someone, what is, um, nobody in the room that's not in your resume and no one in the room knows anything about you. And I was like, well, Kathy, I said, I don't know if this is going to help me or hurt me. I said, but I can down four beers in 18 seconds. And she goes, get that man a beer. He's hired. <laughs> and I, was, I have, a you had to do it. No, I have a video of myself on YouTube that I do it in 18. Oh seconds. my God. You got to send that to yeah, me. I'll send it to you. But but over the years, I don't know why, I just learned how to do it. Probably enough spring breaks and college parties or whatever, but I can, yeah. I can't touch beer. Yeah. Gout. Oh, okay. That's how I found out I had gout. It wow. used to be my chocolate cake. I mean, yeah. anywhere, fishing, whatever, it's mm -hmm. just beer, mm -hmm. right? 
And then one day I have a beer and and I tried to step in the morning like, ow. (laughs) It's the last beer I ever had. Last last, last thing. (laughs) So going back to Bobby Hall. So Bobby Hall lived with my aunt and uncle, uh, spent some time with him. The one thing that he did that I kind of took from him was. Is he a beer chugger? Wasn't, it wasn't a beer trigger. I'm sure he had his beers, but it was, um, he had a list of jokes in a, in a little notepad that he would tell, like when he's out at, a, uh, we went out to dinner with him, Gordy Howe and him and my family. No. We went out to dinner after one of the, the games. He, no. Yeah, Gordy Howe was playing on the Whalers, and there's, oh. a, there's a steak joint right next to the uh, the, Collis, uh, the Hockey royalty. Oh, unbelievable. And, and but I, I was probably, what was this? 79 i'm 13 years old not having a clue of who i'm sitting with i mean i knew who it was but not until now how much i would appreciated that so but he was a big flirt he was uh you know they called him a womanizer back in the day he, he passed away right rest his soul um but he had this little notepad of jokes and we're and talking about bobby hall bobby hall yeah yeah and so i kind of watched him like work the room work the everything and over the years, I kind of picked that up. And so I probably have 150 jokes that I can rattle off like this. That Give me your, your best. I, 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 I'll what are you keep, worried about? I'll keep it clean. Um, Why? <laughs> all right. Keep it real. All right. So the family is all upset about grandpa. We just found out that he's addicted to Viagra. But grandma's taking it the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> Now hey, is that you the might, clean one? That was the clean one. So, oh, you know, I also do kids parties. You know, so, <laughs> so you know, why is it uh, why is it always hot in the corner? It's always ninety degrees. You know, so <laughs> that's that's I, a kid one. That's yeah. So I, I have a big range, but uh, I, I'll keep it appropriate. But that I love making people laugh. I love bringing people together. It's the enjoyment of my life. Family, friends, people I don't know. Um, you know. Life is too short. I love just having a good time. Making it's it's never about me. I like I like people seeing them light up. I like bringing out the best in people, and it's just uh, it's how I live my life. How can people contact you? Um, uh, my phone number is five six one. No, no you're no, really okay, doing okay. this? No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't do that. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm only telling you for your own <laughs> privacy. Okay. I mean, if, okay. if you, you don't know, yeah, <laughs> okay. I, I don't, don't. Okay, so I've had some people do that. I don't suggest it unless it's like a work number or a okay. shadow number. Okay. Uh, Instagram is Tadio two point I started that after I got divorced. Um, uh, LinkedIn is uh, LinkedIn slash in slash Tadio, T O D D E O. Um, quick story on how I got Tadio. Uh, I would used to go to the uh, club space down in Miami with some friends and uh, a lot of South American friends that we met down there and they would all butcher my name. They're mm. told, told Todd, Tadio. And pretty soon they came out with Tadio and it just kind of stuck for the last 15 years and that's what everyone calls me. Everybody in the chessing room has a name. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I used to, when I, when I played, it was Fish. Yeah. Last name's Fish. Yeah, there you go. So it was Fish, yep. right? And my nephew. They, they usually add a Y or an E to the or end of fishy. your name. Or yeah, they, yeah, or yeah, they, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. that's, that. people don't know that. You had a, you had a Y to the end. And, and yep. you're not playing hockey unless you have a nickname. Or you yeah. have an acronym or some sort of abbreviation to your name. So, Tadio, thank you so much for being on. I hope this uh, app kills it. I hope your presentation kills it. And who knows, maybe, uh, you know, we do a follow-up in a year from now and you let us know how things are going. Uh, last plug, uh, it's photo, P-H-O-T-O dash op dot I-O. It's in the beta stage. We're going to be downloading and launching in the first quarter. Give it a whirl, give it a test. And uh, so can people download it now? It, it's, it's, uh, we have the web version, the, the last 150, 250 K that we're raising from friends and family ends in a week or two. And then after that, we believe one of the investors in Boston is going to take us out. Um, so the app will be launched and that'll be fully ready to go right now. You can upload some photos and check out the cool AI. If I upload a photo, it gives me 30 tags that it, rec- it recognizes in the, what's in the, the app video. again? What is it? Photo app dash IO. Amazing. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much, brother. Thanks, bud. You're the best. Great time. Take it easy. All right.